So the next person to come on stage is completely different strategy, and we pick people who've got different stories and different scenarios, and someone who actually um, is, has been uh, investing from a distance and has been coming uh, to Mastermind on a regular basis and make a big commitment to do that. So please put your hands together and welcome Bernard Angerhofer. Hello, MM17. Hi. And hello, everybody watching via the live webcast. My name is Bernard. And throughout the Mastermind, we've been sharing our successes, our challenges, worries, um, as today. And it's quite amazing what, uh, what happens in a year to many of us. And one thing I noticed uh, throughout this, and especially today, is um, that it's, it's more in your head than anywhere else. It's just in your head. And you then tend to pick the right environment, and things start to happen. And I'm, I'm happy I was, uh, I was given the opportunity to be on stage here to share my story with you. Um, I would like to first of all thanks, say thanks to everybody. There were many people I spoke to, I met throughout the year, many people that helped me, and I gained uh, quite a few new friends. Um, don't want to mention any names, too many to mention, but thanks to all of you, because you became an essential part of this journey for me. Um, next, I would uh, like to introduce myself, um, just give you a bit of background, where I come from, where I was before Mastermind, and where I share my deals with you, and where I am now. So I grew up in Germany. Forgot about that. I grew up in Germany. I married, got two kids, and I lived close to Munich. Um, when I was uh, 17, I had the chance to spend a year in the United States, with, which kind of triggered my desire to live abroad. So when I was beginning of my 20s, I had the chance to come to London for one year to do a master's, semin a master's course. And that actually was the start of my life in London, um, where I lived for 10 years um, from 95, where I also met my wife and it became my second home. And since then, I always had the desire to come here on a regular basis and find a way to do that. And that, besides my family and the freedom I can gain through property, is the main reasons why I decided to engage in property. Um, in 2000, I bought a house in London. Back then, it was meant to be a family home, and I had no idea about investing, etc. But later on, when I started my mastermind, it turned out that it was a good idea to do that back then. The reason for me back then was mainly because I saw my friends doing that. It wasn't a common thing in Germany, really, so it was new to me. And um, I realized that it might be cheaper than actually renting a place. So I decided to go that route and managed to buy a place. Um, yeah. In 2006, I moved back to Germany, and I went into a corporate career. So back then, that was my big dream. I wanted to, to grow in my career in a company. I wanted to become uh, a sales director, a CEO, um, and basically earn money for somebody else. And I did that for quite a few years. So I, I managed to become sales and marketing director in a company working in the automotive industry, which was quite interesting at times. But after a while, I realized it wasn't really for me. And I needed more freedom, more my own thing to do. And um, the first step was to uh, join a startup company with a few partners. Um, out of that, I founded then a company just with one partner that was just uh, two years ago. And we were providing mar marketing consultancy to companies like Microsoft and Google. Very interesting job, though. And um, I decided then in um, spring, summer, 2000, last year, basically, um, that I wanted to invest in property. And the idea I had in my head was, get a flat in Munich for 200,000 euros or so and get some property in the UK. That was my mindset at that stage. So I went online, did a bit of Googling, and I came across uh, a few um, companies um, that offered um, property training. And I came across um, Simon, which resonated most with me. So I thought I wanted to try that out. And I signed myself onto the Accelerator last summer in London. That was basically the start of my property journey. Just when I got back from the accelerator, my business partner wanted to speak to me and told me that he doesn't see much point in us working together for a long time. And although I had a similar thought, uh, but my timeline was totally different, 
um, that was just really bad timing because at that time um, I was thinking of buying a property and in my head was going on no job, no income, no mortgage, no company. Uh, I'm not going to manage to do anything now. So I, I was feeling pretty unwell, stressed. I didn't know how, how long I could support my family from my savings and what I had back then and the little income from the London property. So I was a bit uh, stressed. So I considered um, various options. Um, I realized the need to have an income. I looked at property, thought, good idea. I looked at other business businesses. I thought, maybe I even considered going back into employment. And then I just decided I'm just going to try it with property. And that was the real start of um, my property journey, my experience. So um, I got on the phone, and that was only through people I knew in the network. And I ended up speaking to a sourcer, who then asked me the normal question, so what's your budget? And in my mind, I had this like 200K for a flat or so. And for whatever reason, I said, I think 2 million should be fine. Yeah. So um, Manfred, the guy's name, um, said, yeah, I think we have some interesting properties in that price range. Let me send you out the details. Um, and I got kind of worried. Yeah? So now I said something which I didn't really believe in at that stage myself. And I got some interesting properties back. So I thought, just give it a try. So I went out, uh, speak to the first bank, and the answer was quite short. You need at least another 100K income, so we even look at it. So I thought, oh gosh didn't know really what to do. Um, I then, um, again, <laughs> via people I knew, I spoke to a friend of mine who worked with a, a, pro um, a mortgage finance consultant before, recommended this guy to me. And um, first I thought, ooh, quite expensive, 150 euros an hour, what this guy wants from me. And I wasn't sure if it was really worth it, spending the money. But I decided to give it a go. And I worked him for, with him for a while. And that enabled me to understand um, how the finance system works in Germany, because he used to work in a bank, was responsible for an area dealing with finance, with giving uh, loans uh, for properties. And he also put me in touch with some regional banks, because the mistake I made in my position was to approach the big banks, the international banks, and I forgot about the local banks, really. And through that, um, the skies kind of cleared up, and I realized there was a chance to actually get a mortgage. Still some things on the way which weren't clear, and um, throughout this process, I, I sort of, I kind of, um, well, I, I'll explain step by step. I learned many things throughout the process. One, once I found um, the first bank, and I, I bring up now the uh, picture of the property. Um, this is a 28 flats property near Ulm in Germany. That's sort of halfway between Munich and Stuttgart. The, the price was 2.4 million. And throughout the process of uh, getting a finance for that, um, I, I kind of started using some of the things I learned on the accelerator. And later on, when the mastermind started, I learned on there. Um, when I first uh, did my first calculations, I just saw the property as a whole with a certain rental income. And as we went through negotiating the deal and the finance, and I actually did sign um, the contract for the purchase of the property before I had a firm offer for finance. I was a bit nervous then, but there was time pressure from the vendor, and apparently the offer was very good in his view. So I, I thought it should work out, but I signed the contract before, and then I had a couple of sleepless nights until um, the banks I've spoken to, they basically indicated they're interested, but until I had a, fir a firm offer for the property. And then the process with the finance uh, started. And that, that I want to share with you, because that was a great learning for me, Something, uh, some things I've never thought of, about before. When you buy a property like this with, uh, say, 28 flats, uh, you can do many things with it. You can buy and hold it. You can uh, split it, sell half of it, all of it, or part of it. Uh, but the bank needs to agree to that in the first place. So we needed to come up, uh, besides the general setup, a fixed or variable finance, we needed to come up with an agreement. What do we do if I want to sell one flat? Do they go in and value that flat and take that off the security they have and ask me for certain money to be paid back on the transaction? Or how, how do we handle that? So this was a very, very insightful process for me. And in the end, we came up with a, with a very simple approach to handle this once I start selling off flats. And then 
uh, through that process, I realized actually there's uh, quite a bit of potential in there. If I split it up, I can sell for a about 30% more per square meter than if I sell the whole building in one go. So um, the figures are um, the current valuation of the property is 2 million. I've got about 250,000 equity in it. The reasons for that is um, that the purchase price was quite good and um, there's a high demand for those properties in the market. So actually at this time the um, price is already higher than when I purchased quite a bit. And um, the property previously um, was taken by the bank, uh, not at an auction yet, but taken by the bank and bought out from the bank by the previous owner. So the property has been neglected for some time, which means the rents haven't been increased. So the first thing we did is we checked all the, all, all the rents and see if we could increase some of the rents. And there was actually uh, on 50% of the apartments, we could increase by about 20%, which had a uh, quite, impact, quite big impact on the first the rental income and second the, the valuation. The net cash flow of this after all costs and before tax is uh, just over 70,000 to 72,000 euros. Um, the purchase, the deal was structured in a way that I bought the property um, fully let and also took over the management agency that was managing the property before. So in the end of the day, after all the challenges uh, I came across, uh, I sort of found a solution for, got the finance in place, then it was rather, rather straightforward. Um, the property went into my possession on the first, like the exchange was in the first, uh, the completion was in the first of December, and it was from then cash flowing without too much interaction on my end, just basically dealing and getting to know the management agent really, and making sure the reporting is uh, done in the way I need it. Good. Um, let me move to my next uh, example. Um, like um, last year, in one of our first, uh, I don't remember whether it was on the accelerator or whether it was on our first or second mastermind, uh, Simon advised us to take the cash out of the property so we have it ready when there's an opportunity coming up. And that's what I did for my London property um, end of the year, end of last year. And I'm glad, quite glad I did that because beginning of the year, uh, I wouldn't be able to get a mortgage that easily anymore. So I just did it in the little time window by accident or by listening to Simon end of last year. And then I had the money ready when a new opportunity came up. And on this property, <coughs> Um, my approach was to work with a former masterminder, most of uh, you know him, that's Dan Hill, um, who uh, basically sourced the property, uh, managed the refurb, and completed it. And for me, that was a very good thing, because first of all, I, I knew him for quite some time then, um, uh, had re recommendations uh, that he worked very well, and trusted him, and he came out of this network. And that was very important for me, um, that he could manage that, because I was living in Germany, and I couldn't be here on a regular basis and look over the works. Um, when I bought the property first, I wanted to go for mortgage and then found out with the mortgage broker I was, um, although he said, no problem, we'll work out fine, I ended up uh, getting an answer, no, you can't get the finance. Um, luckily, I had refinanced the London property and could buy the property cash, which I did then. And I'm just now going through the process of refinance. And by now, I found a good, uh, good broker, a recommendation out of the network as well, um, who um, will basically get uh, most of the money out of that deal for me. So I can't give the exact figures yet. Um, in terms of um, the value and the equity, uh, that's the same. In that case, because I bought the cash, and that's uh, just under 200,000. And the net cash flow as a six-paid HMO which was a conversion from a four-bed um, residential property before, is 18,000, just over 18,000 pounds. Um, I'd like to just share sort of my experiences, results, etc., that I had in the mastermind and some, and some of the other things um, I've realized and I'd like to share is, so one thing I noticed from when I started last summer, um, where I was kind of stressed out and thought I would never get a mortgage without a job. 
I realized those things were just like really in my head because I didn't have a job when I got the mortgage for this uh, big property in Germany. So it was something that was holding me back and that's a theme I always see again uh, or saw again throughout the whole mastermind journey that you think it can be done and then it's like a law for you and it cannot be done. But when you change your thinking, uh, things actually change drastically. And for me, um, going on this mastermind program had a big impact financially because even the first deal is enough to support my family and traveling around and going to seminars. Um, but also um, I realized that there's still sometimes this um, thinking that holds me back from doing certain things, but I'm aware of it and I can work on it. Um, I started another business during my mastermind journey, which, is, which works well for me because it, um, it's based on similar things. It's based on, on network, speaking to people. And with that business, uh, today I was able to create about the same equity as I created in my properties and have, well, just coming up to 50% of the income I generated from the properties. And I'm doing that only because it matches very well and fits well um, to what I like to do. And um, throughout the mastermind, I also started to focusing more. So maybe just doing one thing is good, but for me, those two things I'm doing work well together. But for instance, I stopped uh, investing in shares and stocks. I went on seminars previously, but I just noticed you have to spend time and focus on it, and it doesn't fit for me at the moment. So for me, it's just those two things I'm doing. So in, in summary, on the property side, I bought um, 28 units in um, Schelflingen near Ulm, uh, the London HMO, and that totaled up to a value of just over two million with an equity of uh, 445,000. I did lend some money uh, in the time where I took out the mortgage to until when I needed the money for the purchase, which added a further 8,500, and my net cash flow is just over 90,000 euros. I'd like to just recap quickly my learnings and um, the tips I want I derived from that. So one year ago, the uh, situation was totally different, and it was quite amazing for me to see what it can be after just one year. Financially, in terms of mindset, and in terms of the whole environment uh, I'm in now. And I realized for myself that now that I managed to generate a certain income. For me, it's not so much about the money, but it's, allow, it's what allows me to do it, like the freedom of choice I have, to spend time with my family, etc. And that's a very nice feeling at the end of this year to be able to say that, that I found the thing that drives me and I actually can do it. Um, the things that worked best for me uh, and I want to share with you is um, that education and um, Doing that in the sort of environment is very important, and that then will allow you to take action, but it's very important actually to take the action and do things and try. Uh, and I noticed for me, even if I think something might not work, you might be surprised in the end, it, it could work out. And one thing um, I would never have done two years ago is pay somebody a lot of money for the services they provide. And I realized actually that's the key to um, drawing yourself out and not being involved and stressed all the time. So my step towards freedom is to pay other people, like something we had uh, quite a few people sharing about as well. It's very well worth paying the right people to help you. Good, um, I've got some upcoming uh, deals or ideas I wanna do. And that's the last thing I would like to uh, talk to you about. Um, this has been going on for uh, well, almost since the beginning of the year. It's a property in eastern Germany. i just show you a picture of that. Um, that's one of the three buildings. So um, this project is with a friend of mine, a JV par uh, a partner, basically, and is in an econo um, economically weak area in eastern Germany. So um, our strategy for that uh, was to buy it, to uh, make it look nicer, um, reduce the void. At the moment, it's about 25% void which is very high in an area where the population decreases, so high risk in a way, then make it nice and then sell it on. And the, um, the project is at 80 flats in total. This is one of the buildings, the picture I took standing on the other building. And we went there um, a few months back uh, with a surveyor, and we actually had the chance to spend four hours with him looking through every angle of the property. 
And that's something I want to share as well. That was a really, really good experience. Some of you guys that are builders, you might not need that. But for me, I learned so much in those four hours. Just that was worth paying him the money. Um, the current state is that we've agreed um, an exchange date with a vendor, shown proof of funds. And last time, the last negotiation we had in uh, September, 1st of September in Berlin, um, we actually decided we want to find a buyer before we sell, uh, before we buy the property. And within a week, um, which was like quite amazing, we found a buyer for the property. So now we're trying to set up the, the contracts in a way that we can seamlessly sell uh, uh, all the three buildings uh, to the buyer. Good. Um, the other thing I will be focusing uh, probably starting from next year is um, building a portfolio here together with a partner in Germany. That's a guy I met through um, my German property network. He's got a building company um, with about 80 people, so he's quite big and experienced in that field, but he doesn't know the UK market. He doesn't speak English very well, so we kind of found that there's a match. And um, we will be setting up a, a holding company under which we, we start buying properties. Um, starting probably from next year. And uh, the last thing for me on, say, my to-do list after Mastermind is realizing a dream. Um, London for me is like my, or UK in general, but London in particular is my second home. And I always wanted to have the opportunity to come back, which I do now, but there's one thing missing. Uh, I need my own place. And I kind of don't just want to buy a flat and pay for it and live in there, but my idea is to buy a larger property, uh, split it up, and from the rental income of some of the flats, I want to finance most of the loft conversion where I want to live. So that's my dream, and that's what I'm going to be working on over the next month. Thank you.